big championship was between Michael the Archangel and Satan himself. I hope you came ready for a championship service, a champion's message, a victor's message, a partner's message for those that are about that life, that kingdom life. Anybody about that life, the kingdom life? Praise God. Come on, let's pray. Father, I just thank you and praise you right now for your presence. I thank you and praise you, dear Heavenly Father, for all that you've done for us, your people. I thank you and praise you, dear Heavenly Father. Hallelujah, that we're on the right team. Hallelujah. We're on your team. Hallelujah. I thank and praise you that each one here under the sound of my voice will receive an on-time message, a word fitly spoken in due season for their life, for their family, for their destiny. I thank and praise you that the enemy has no authority in their life. I thank and praise you, hallelujah, that the kingdom is real and we are carriers of your kingdom authority here on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Father, we thank and praise you for a divine impartation today that would empower us, that would encourage us, that would lift us up, Correct us if necessary for our own good and your glory. But most of all, build us up in the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as you're sitting down. Uh, look around, touch somebody, and say welcome to the champion's circle. Praise the Lord. Those of you streaming right now, welcome to the champion's circle. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you also to click and like Amen. Click like if you're watching live. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> the book of Revelation describes the first big championship and who the winner was and still is. The Word of God says in Revelation 12, 7, and there was a war in heaven. A war where? So we know that there's battles here on earth. There's war, wars here on earth. But there was a battle in the heavens. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Did you get that? Michael and his angels fought against who? The dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. So the dragon fought as well with his angels are you following me are you tracking and prevail not and prevail what neither was their place found anymore in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him Woo, that, yeah, I had two people, amen, pray, yeah, started to get their praise on. But listen to what it says in verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength. Not only deliverance, but strength. Somebody say, I need that strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. They talked smack. They were haters against us both day and night. Verse 11 is the good news. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. And they loved not their lives unto death. You're going to be on the team, you got to be sold out. You're going to be on the team, come on somebody. You can't love your life, love yourself more than you love God. Woo, that's okay, I'll go slow. Verse 12 says, therefore rejoice. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell where? In them, hmm, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, hear this, 
because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The clock is ticking. It's the fourth quarter. Come on, somebody. And the clock, it's not the beginning of the fourth quarter. Let me share something with you. It's towards the end of the four, fourth quarter. When we look at this text and when we look at this historical championship, that, that, that battle that took place, we see the first draft take place in heaven. Satan drafted his team of angels to go against God's archangel and his team. Come on. We see the home team battle and opposing team. And how many of you know the home team always has the advantage? Woo! My God. And it's written that Satan's team lost. The home team, it's recorded, won the championship. And Satan, hear me, now was kicked off the playing field into planet Earth. Most of our teams did not make the playoffs. Most of our teams did not make the championship between the NFC, between both conferences. Are you with me? Let alone the Super Bowl. The Cowboys didn't make it. The 49ers didn't make it. The Raiders didn't make it. Come on. Cincinnati didn't make it. While at the same time this week, we heard teams trade some great players. They traded some great players. They traded some coaches as well as some teams lost some fans. And there's a lot of trading that goes on amongst teams in this earth. And there's a lot of fans that always switch teams in the middle of the game or after the game is over because they felt like their team should have done better. Today's championship game is between the Chiefs and the Eagles. Them birds. Today is a historical day. Hear me. Stay in the spirit. It's part of your problem. That for the first time in the history of a championship battle, you have two African-American coaches. History. Quarterbacks. What did I say? Coaches. Okay, no, quarterbacks. 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 You know what I'm talking about. Stop playing. We saw people get traded. Listen to me. We saw people this past week leave teams that you thought that they originally said, Kevin Durant, I recur. They, they said, we're going to be on this team and we're going to make a run and we're going to win championships back to back. And then when, it, when they, they couldn't win, everybody what? Won out. James Harden was the first one out. <laughs> Come on. Lakers traded Russell Rest, but they have been trying to get rid of him <laughs> since after the first season he played. Help, come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? But let us not lose sight of a spiritual battle that's being played right now before our eyes. Come on. There's another playoff. That's happening right now. The kingdom of darkness against the kingdom of light. Come on. The sons of this world against the sons of God's kingdom. Kingdom of darkness against the kingdom of God. The kings of this earth against the king of kings. Here's the good news. The good news is found in Colossians 1.13. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. 
That's good news right there. I said, that's good news right there. He has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, into the kingdom of light. Praise the Lord. What is the kingdom of darkness so that we're really clear? When we look at verse 13, it is the realm of demonic spirits, of Satan himself, who the Bible tells us now controls the earth's belief system and seeks constantly to deceive and destroy mankind. Seeks the enemy's objective is to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to dominate the kingdom. He wants to dominate everything that belongs to God. I ask you the question today, whose team are you on? Are you really God's property? You see, the jersey that you wear makes it clear which team you represent. Ah, uh, you're preaching good, McFarland. See, I, I, I wear this jersey today for all of my life, as this being my first pick, not because I was born in Texas, which is a good reason, because I'm born, I was born in Texas on an Air Force base, that I would then be loyal to the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys. It makes all the sense in the world. But no, I was influenced, Javier, I was influenced, Brother Eichner, I was influenced, Bishop, by this guy by the name of Roger Starbuck, Tony Dorsett. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, this is the real deal right here. Come on. And a few other players, listen to me, that won me over to that team. Because they were all about the Cowboys. Can I ask you a question? Who have you won over to your team? Because you're all about that team. Who, who have you defended your team to? Even when your team didn't make it to the, the playoffs. Forget the championship. Here we go again. You didn't make the playoffs. Here we go again. You get to the, you get to the finals. You get to the, 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 the championship. Come on. And, and, and you lose again. Whose team are you on? Who, whose team are you playing for? Well, when I came into a real relationship with Jesus Christ, I understood that uh, I was going to have to trade teams. Because he paid a price, listen to me, to draft me over to his side. And so I made a decision a long time ago, as much as I love, watch this, the Cowboys, as much as I love, watch this, the world. Why? Because I was born in the world, and I was of the world, and I liked everything that the world had to offer. But I said, you know what? I have to come to a place where I'm going to trade in that jersey for the real jersey. Come on, somebody. And represent the king of kings. See, I played hard for the kingdom of darkness. Oh, no, you don't hear me. I was a big player on that field. You understand what I'm saying? Man, when the flesh rains, man, it either rains or it don't. It's a flop or it's not. I, man, I, I, I was winning. I liked it. But then I got sold out when I received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I said, you know what? This is the team I'm going to rep until I die. This is the team I'm going to defend. I'll defend the gospel until I die. I, I, listen to me. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I play big for the devil. Now how dare me. Listen to me. After everything that God has done for me. Done for my family. I not play big for the kingdom. Come on somebody. 
You weren't drafted to play small. You weren't drafted to sit in the bleachers. You weren't drafted to sit on the sidelines. You were drafted to get in the game. Your partnership counts. Your gift counts. Everybody can't be a quarterback. Everybody can't be a lineman. Everybody can't be a defense. Uh, come on. A, a wide receiver. Uh, come on. Everybody can't play, play you know, a uh, 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 running back. Come on. You got people that defend the ball, and you got people who run the ball. And the, listen to me. And each team member is important to the overall team. Why? Because we are the team. Amen. She said, even the kicker. Why? Because sometimes the person that you least see can show up and kick the winning ball. Come on. Because all you need is either one point or three points. And sometimes, listen to me, when the odds are against you, at the end of the day, because it's all about who, if you're going to win or if you're going to lose, I'll take that one point. Amen. So it doesn't have to be the quarterback. doesn't have to be the wide receiver. Come on. doesn't have to be the, 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 the defensive uh, 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 backs, you understand, that, that intercept or whatever. Listen, it can just be the kicker. Here come the kicker. Nobody's excited about the kicker until it's that one moment in the game where they need the kicker. <clears throat> Amen. But each man has a, come on, a place. Each man has a role to play. Each man has a specialty, a gift. Every man is needed on the team. How can I say I'm a partner with the team, but I ain't in the game? Come on. See, win, lose, or draw, I've found that God loves me. I can't tell somebody, win, lose, or draw, God loves you, irregardless of yourself. And, and, and that's, that's what helps me, listen to me, remember what a great team that I'm on. Because the owner of the team. See, it's about the owner of the team. See, the owner of the team carries all the power. The owner of the team carries all the weight the owner of the team carries all the influence Woo, glory to God and we got an owner of this team hallelujah that we should be honored and privileged to play for am I in the right place this morning scripture says that God so loved me that he gave Christ life for me whether you realize it or not, many people are looking for somebody to pick them. I got good news for you. You already been picked. You were picked in the first round of the draft of your life. When you were born, God picked you. You didn't have to wait for the second, the third, the fourth round. Hopes for an after round pick. No, you were in the first round pick. Look at somebody say, you were first round pick. I don't care what nobody say about you. Bow-legged and all, you were first-legged pick. And he picked us and he placed us in the kingdom of his dear son. He picked us and he placed us on his team. Come on. 1 John 5, 19 says, we know that we are of God. I like that. And that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. When you're in the kingdom, when you're God's property, you don't lie in the power of the enemy. The enemy can't touch you. If you're really on the team. See, that's the question. If you're really on the team. H have you ever seen an opposing team uh, uh, in a game, whether it be NBA, whether it be football, hit their quarterback or hit somebody on their team unjustly? Man, what, what, what happens? A fight break out, man. We gonna, uh, let's see who really down. Come on, somebody. When you get attacked, you need to know your whole team is down for you. Your whole team is willing to rep. I'm getting a little violent here. 
History records God's kingdom of light has overcome the kingdom of darkness. That's what the word records. Why? Why? How did that happen? For God sent Jesus to earth to demonstrate, hear this, how mankind, how men should live, behave, and operate in his domain. You and I, when we were transferred into the kingdom of God, listen to me, listen to me, God gave us a domain, dominion, domain. So wherever God has placed you at, you have dominion over your domain. But many people, listen to me, have not tapped into their birthright and to that authority and that power, listen to me, and exercised it in their domain. And so that's why we see individuals on the team, listen to me, just like in the natural, you can be on the winningest team and be addicted to drugs. You can be on the winningest team and you're greedy. You're, you're, you're a greedy gut. And so you out doing stuff you have no business doing like running dope up and down the highway and about to lose everything all because you still tied to the world. Some friends that don't even play. They don't even have what you have to lose, but you're playing with the other side while you're trying to play on the team that provides you all the benefits that you need to do life. Yeah. Am I communicating? Maybe only guys can understand this. Jesus said, listen to me, I love you so much, I'll die for you. So Jesus then died on the cross, paid the penalty, hear me, that we deserved, I like this, for our rebellion by trading places with us. God then, as a result of his sacrifice for you and I, raised Jesus from the dead, showing that Jesus Christ's authority, even over death and the kingdom of darkness, no longer had place in our lives. So now, I've traded places. Traded teams. I'm on the right team now, and with the right team comes all the right benefits. Why? Because it, a good owner cares about his team. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Then Jesus in returns goes back to his original place as the word at the right hand of the Father. Come on, after delivering all authority and power to his children. That's you and I. So that we can play big in this field on planet earth without the power of the enemy overriding us. Darkness overriding us. Evil overriding us. Demonic spirits conquering us. See, a child of God, once you've been transferred into the kingdom of God, come on, there's born again, you with me? Born again, delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Come on, you now got power and authority. As soon as you put that new, that new jersey on, you got to be proud of your jersey. Come on. I said, you got to be, you got to be, come on, man. You got to be willing to flex. You know, everybody got, folk got jerseys on. Why are they flexing? What? What? When, when you put your true identity on, that, that real armor on, you're like, What? can't touch this what there ain't nobody like me what I'm a playmaker I'm a game changer what folks hated Deion Sanders Woo! prime time but see he knew who he was and when you know who you are <clears throat> and you're on the right team come on somebody you can be prime time did you know God created each and every one of us to be the prime time in our, on our teams? Come on. Come on. You, everybody got a role to play. Come on. Anybody used to like Pittsburgh at all? Anybody remember the bus? Oh, man, you get that boy that ball. He running right through the line. I'm getting ready to run on you. 
and there ain't nothing you can do. Why? I got some power and authority to do this thing, man. I'm telling you, you got some power and authority to do life and not let life do you. You got power and authority as a real partner and participator in the game, listen to me, to go undefeated. Does that, does that mean that, listen to me, you, you, you know, you, you, you're not going to lose some, some, some fights here and there? No, that doesn't mean that. Matter of fact, you need to lose some fights, so you need to know how to sharpen up on your game. Come on. How to use your weaponry. Come on, somebody. Say, yeah, you got me on that time, but you won't get me the next time, sucker. I'm going to get you, sucker. Come on. You, you see opposing teams come back and play another opposing team? Come on. And they say, yeah, you got me the last time, but we getting ready to whip your head this time. But everybody on the team knows that it takes a, a collective group effort to win a game, to win the championship. And the question is, as we've seen the Lakers, We've seen Boston, we've seen different teams. At that final game, they went in too cocky. They thought they had it. They didn't stay humble and hungry. See, if you're gonna, if you're gonna stay on the playing field, you, you gotta stay humble and hungry. Because he who is humble, God exhorts. He who is hungry wins. I got, you got to be hungry for God. You got to be hungry for the things of God. You got to be hungry for the presence of God. You have to be hungry for the anointing every single day. If not, the devil will whip your head. Why? Because there's an opposing force. Are you with me? See, whether it's football, I want you to understand something. Whether it's football, basketball, hockey, come on, soccer, every organization has an owner. I want to paint the picture for you. In a kingdom, listen to me, the king owns everything. In an organization, the owner owns everything. In a kingdom, the king is the final authority. And every organization has a vision and a mission. Is that not right, Bishop? Hello? Hello, I said, every organization has a vision and mission. Do you have the vision? Are you living out the Great Commission? Every organization has a culture. And the culture is made up by the people, but it's based on the king. And those who don't have the king's best heart... Those who don't have the king's nature makes the culture toxic. Every organization here on earth has rules and regulations, has rules and structure. Every organization has staff position description. Any of you all have a job? Any of you all have a business? Well, you got a position description that come along with it. Am I in the right place? Every organization has a social responsibility to its community. Woo, you preaching good. Every organization has players, fans, and spectators, and even haters. The question is, which one are you? Have you ever seen, have you ever seen a fight going on? Been at a boxing, a boxing uh, uh, match, and folk on the side are shouting to the guy that's in the ring on what they need to do. <laughs> no, punch there! No, no, do this! Negro politan, you ain't in the fight! <laughs> you ain't in the corner, you ain't understanding! But you're trying to tell me what to do. When's the last time you've been in a fight? When's the last time you've been on the playing field? Don't, don't let them get the up on you. Uh, okay, when's the last time? Come on. It's easy to be a spectator and judge everything. 
Talk about what you like and what you don't like. And if you would, if you would have did this on that last play, if you would have did that in the last round, you'd be ahead points. Well, Nick, I didn't. <laughs> what you doing? Look at your neighbor and say, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What are you saying? I'm going to share something with you. Every team, every organization, watch it, needs partners. You don't get to be a part of something great and not be actively involved. Here's what we have to understand. An organization is made up of a body of people with a particular purpose, procedure, and pursuit to do business on that playing field. Here's what we have to understand. The kingdom of God is not an organization, nor is it a democracy. So it's not run like man runs things. It's not run like institutions here in the earth realm. It's not a democracy. You don't get to have an opinion. The king sets everything up for how everything is supposed to go. Religion adopts laws. God says, adopt me, love me as yourself. Come on. I mean, love, your, love me, then love your neighbor as yourself. Come on. And, and, and if you love me, you'll fulfill the law. So, so there, there's, there's not rules and regulations as such. Why? Because there's freedom. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So our experience in the kingdom should be different from our experiences in the world system. Am I talking to somebody? A kingdom, everybody say a kingdom, is centered around a king who is the source of his people. Here's what a king does. He in turn transfers his spirit to the people. confers upon his people, his subjects, favor, anointing, blessing, character, nature, integrity, so that we can reflect the king, not the organization, but the king. This makes sense. Are you with me? One of the things that I've learned is a true child, somebody say a true child, always has the spirit of either both or one of their parents. They carry the nature of that parent whether they want to or not. Why? Because everything produces after its own kind. That's why you have to be careful hating your parent because you can become the very same thing that you said you hate. Come on. Here's what we have to understand. The king impacts his his, his territory. The king impacts his territory, will, purpose, and pursuit. So when the king is king, lord, and savior of my life, he then impacts my will. He in, listen to me. He, in, he not only influences, but he impacts me in such a way by how he treats me. Come on. That it, it, it supernaturally adjusts my purpose and my intent on how I do life. So now I become intentional, intentional about being a saint and not an ain't. Because you have the saints and the ain'ts. There are those who think they're saints, but they ain't. There are those who think they're on the team, but they ain't. There's those that, those that say they rep the team, but they don't. Are you with me? A true saint, a true player in the kingdom, hear me, their person has been impacted by the king. So you can't keep doing life the way you want to. You can't keep behaving the way you want to. You can't. That's my best language. That's, that's, that's what you get. 
That's, that's cowboy, Texas, the South. It's, 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 that's not proper English. Can't. You can't fulfill your purpose when God is not the main purpose. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way, his will, his, his order for doing life. Not a rule, not a law, because religion is an enemy against the kingdom of God. God is a sovereign God. So when we even understand the sovereignty of God, God even will allow you to live your life however you want to live your life. Selah. You say, no, pastor, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Because God doesn't override any of our wills. Either you're going to play on the team or you're not going to play on the team. Either you're going to show up or you're not going to show up. It's not the fact that I fired you, you fired yourself. It's not the fact that I gave up on you, you, you gave up on me, says the Lord. You traded teams. You traded teams. Have you ever had somebody trade you in for something that you not, knew wasn't better? That's another message on another day. I'll, I'll stay in. We see that Jesus devoted his preaching not to that heaven, but to the kingdom of heaven that he said was here and now and near and at hand. Mark 1.15 says this, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in my father's word, Jesus said. Repent from being indoctrinated with philosophies and your own wisdom. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. That's it. That's all. I'd ask you to be a three-trick pony. Just repent. Turn from your ways. Then he says, here's what we set ourselves for, up for when we repent and get a proper perspective on God and life. He says in Luke 17, 21, minister Denise, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Why? Because the moment you repent it, the moment that you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, the moment, listen to me, that you were drafted onto the king's side, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, watch this, is now within you. So we have to understand what's in the kingdom. Love, joy, peace, righteousness. Come on. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Yeah, man. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, everybody. There's joy in God's kingdom. You come to church and it's always chaos. That ain't the kingdom. You come to church and you experience haters. That ain't the kingdom. When you come to church and there's legalism. That ain't the kingdom. You should be coming to church. Watch this because you are part of the team. And you showing up to worship the king. You showing up to praise the team. I don't know nobody that listens to me. Oh my goodness. I don't know nobody that shows up to their team's game. Mean mugging. Attitude. You got to be forced to root for your team. No, you're behind paid for that ticket. You coming to praise. <laughs> to cheer for your team. So what we now have to understand, watch this, when we come into the kingdom, the believer has the opportunity 
to fill the earth with the king's nature, to fill the earth with the king's power, to influence, listen to me, to carry influence in the earth realm to win the ain'ts over to the saints. Come on, somebody. Why? Because we have to understand that there's an opposing force. Jesus said in John 10, 10, for the enemy cometh by the what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Do you know that there's no other religion, no other God in the earth realm that says, I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly? You know why? Because they can't. They can't give you what you're going to get on this team. Come on, somebody. When you get hit, when you get blindsided, let me share something with you. God's kingdom, God's structure is set up in such a way that he'll intervene and convene. Is that right? Intervene in the hit. You see that boy the other month get hit on that field? And they said, what was his name again? Jamar Hammond. They said that, listen to me, if that team, the NFL, listen to me, didn't have the team there, the, the physicians, the doctors there with the expertise, he wouldn't have made it. That boy died on the field and they brought him back. You better hear me. I said he died on the field and brought him back. That's, that's the kind of business that Jesus is in. You can be dying, and he can bring you back. Come on, somebody. That's the kind of team that you want to be on. Hey, you want to be on the kind of team that listens to me, no matter what you do to this earth suit, no matter what you do to this jersey, guess what? I get to live for eternity. I win. I, I win now and after. I said, I win now and after. Because all I do is win, 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 win. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. See, you got to say in the midst when you feel like you're at a loss, when you feel like you're losing. All I do is win, 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 win. Why? I'm playing for the greatest team. I'm playing for the greatest owner. I'm playing for the team, listen to me, that's already won the championship. Woo! Do you know that even the people that don't play in the game, but they're on the team for real, for real, when the team win, they win. When the team get a ring, you get a ring. <clears throat> Can I tell you some good news? When you get on this team, everybody get a ring. Woo! Yeah, everybody get a ring. Amen. But the question is, are you on the team? Are you, are you, are you walking in kingdom authority, kingdom purpose? Come on. The prince of darkness who works through the kings of this world against the kingdom of God. They've already lost. They just don't know it. They're on, they're just on, they're on, a, they're on a countdown clock. See, the enemy wants to have no domain over everything that God has dominion over, and he can't. But he's stupid enough to think that he can because there's some silly people, spirits out there, who will give him entrance to let them use them. <sighs> Here's the fact. The kingdoms of this world is against the kingdom of God. That's just true fact. Again, the question is, I can't ask you enough, whose team are you really on? Who, you, who are you really in partnership with? Who are you really in partnership with? I, I've learned some things about partnerships. But before I share that with you real quick, before I get ready to close, the Old Testament says, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're we, we going to be a part of the game. We're going to be game changers. That's what, that's what me and mine are going to do. You take it all the way to the New Testament. Matthew 12, 30. Jesus said, if you're not on my side, you're against me. Yeah. Woo! 
if you're not on my side, you're against me. Yeah, I'm a Christian, but I, you know, I don't do the whole church thing. If you're not on my side, how are you going to... Oh, so you're just a fan. Fans don't get rings. Spectators don't get rings. Come on, Coach Arnaz. Only the players get rings. So you either playing or you spectating. Are you a fan or a hater? Which one is it going to be? Which one is it going to be? Hello? I'll share with you another time, but there's seven franchise kingdoms. Scripture records it. Did you know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. When enumerated separately, I'll share this with you. One of the seven nations is called the Canaanites. While the others are called the Amorites. Come on, somebody. Jerusites, the Hittites, the Nigrites. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and the Parasites. They, come on, these are world franchise players in this supernatural. Come on battle that's going on and then there's the reigning king with an undefeated record amen michael and the archangels come on and the people of god us amen that boy told him when he was faced against a, a great army he said look at here son don't get nervous there's more with us than are with them i came to tell somebody there's more with us than there are with them the question is, which side are you on? Yeah, I, I, which side are you on? Whose team are you on? What, what part do you play? What's your position in Christ? Are you an enemy or a foe of the king? He, he, here's this. Let me leave you with this. An enemy is like a tear, one who resembles wheat, who always causes problems against things and will argue when opportunity arises. An enemy of God is one who opposes the presence and purpose of God in this world. Never willing to stand up for truth and righteousness. Why? Because I like Beyonce. I like Rihanna. I like church, girl. Go listen to the words. Stop being so blind. You on TikTok, church girl in it. Stop. That's like taking off your jersey and going on and putting on the other team's jersey while y'all in the middle of the game and going, yeah, I like how they're doing it over here. Do the Dougie. No, stop. Stop. Everybody say, but there's a foe. A foe is a person who appears to be close with us and befriends us just when his presence and help is needed. You said a word right there. Psalms 127, 4 says, Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. See, we've been born to be arrows against the kingdom of darkness, whether you realize it or not. It's the wise man that recognizes the purpose for seed, the purpose for birthing kings and queens into the earth realm to understand that they're to be formed against the kingdom of darkness. Your assignment from the beginning, whether you realize or not, it wasn't to be a Christian. It was to be a believer, a citizen of the kingdom of God. It wasn't about joining the church. It was about, listen to me, being in the kingdom and walking in your kingdom authority here on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because you're influenced by the king. Your life is built around the king. We do things the way the king does it. That's why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Anybody not following Christ, run. So again, I just leave you. Whose team are you on? Who's, who are you partnering with? You can't be partners of the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And sometimes we don't like when people check us, but you need to be checked. Listen, you need to wake up to see how you, watch this, what field you're playing on. 
who you're really repping. Again, it ain't about no religion. It's about being influenced by the king. Amen. Having his nature, having his character, his integrity, understand, understanding his way of doing things so that we can play on this field called life and win. Both now and after. I'm done. Welcome to the Champion Circle. Um, I just have a few, a few announcements. Um, join us for weekly prayer online Monday at Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Uh, please call 701-801-9686. Join in for prayer. Stand in the gap with us online. Amen. And don't forget our Tuesday night teaching on the Lift Channel on YouTube at 7 p.m. And we're also having a multicultural Sunday on February the 26th. So please prepare a fun-filled day of worship and fellowship and food. If you um, cook multicultural foods, we would love to have your dish as well. We do this every year. Praise God. Um, again, Pastor mentioned the oil, the anointing oil. Um, it's, per it's here for purchase for $10 or more. You want to break every evil assignment the enemy has for you. The Bible says no weapon formed against you will prosper. So this oil and the word, no weapon formed against you will prosper. The word Bible didn't say the weapon wouldn't form. It says it won't prosper. Amen. So um, don't forget, may, uh, see, see Sister Mary at the end of the service for um, your oil. Um, so we are looking for... Um, you know, we have different platforms where we send our messages out. And pastor is looking for two or three people to join the social media team that has experience or want to learn more about creating relevant content, videotaping and editing shows to join the team. So please contact pastor directly by calling our church office. Um, get connected by uh, today by uh, subscribing to our new platform a better you created by pastor where you receive weekly inspirational tracks access to special teachings podcasts reviews interviews um, along with monthly webinars some free some paid for that will help you grow and develop your life skills taking your life and business endeavors to a higher levels. So please go to dranthonymcfarland.com, pop in your email at the bottom. You can join uh, the Better You Download Club, which requires a monthly partnership. You invite friends and family to join the platform. And pastors go uh, by the end of this month, this is January, no, this is February, um, is to have 100 subscribers. So um, if everybody in this room subscribe, then tell a friend and they subscribe, then pastor will reach his goal. Amen? Be over to God. So amen. All right. Um, Elder Paul? Just wanted to make a, just wanted to remind everyone who's uh, planning to attend our health and fitness seminar today, meet me right next door where the chairs and tables are. Otherwise, I'd like everyone to stand as we dismiss. Father, I want to thank you and praise you, Lord God, for the word that's gone forth. I thank you, Lord God, that your angels around and camped everyone here. I thank you, Lord God, that traveling mercies are upon them as they depart from this place. And we give you praise and glory, Father, that we will honor you in everything that we do today, in Jesus' name. And all that agree with that prayer say, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day.